have Dr. Jennifer Freiheit, the health officer uh, at Kenosha County. So, uh, Doctor, thank you so much for uh, talking to us today. Thank you. So maybe those who don't know uh, that there is a health office in uh, Kenosha County, what exactly does that office do? Sure. So we're a public health department. Some public health departments cover a whole county. Some are just a municipal or jurisdiction, jurisdiction specific, but we are for the whole of Kenosha County. Uh, before pandemic times, uh, health departments do everything from sexually transmitted infection clinics to uh, lead programs to ensure children are not lead poisoned to home visiting nurses to restaurant inspections. So we have over 60 programs and services in the health department. And, um, and one of the things we do is uh, keep the public safe during a communicable disease outbreak uh, from measles and, and, and tuberculosis all the way up to a pandemic such as COVID-19. So we have many uh, statutory responsibilities when it comes to communicable diseases and this is one of them. And maybe let's start off with the, the pandemic. There's interchangeable where you hear pandemic, COVID-19, coronavirus. Are those three interchangeable or are they all different? Maybe you could explain, explain that. Well, a pandemic is when there's a virus that has affected the whole world. So that is, you know, and COVID-19 is the virus that has affected the whole world. It, it comes from the family of coronaviruses. So there are dozens of coronaviruses and COVID-19 is just one in that family uh, of coronaviruses. Uh, how can we prevent uh, the spread of this uh, uh, coronavirus? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's all the basic things you've been hearing all year long, which is wash your hands, stay apart from other people, um, you know, stay out of crowded areas, and make sure you're wearing a mask when you're out in public. Um, so it's those basic good hand hygiene and protective measures that public health has been putting out, including social distancing and and uh, limitations on group sizes and that sort of thing. So, and with these new variants coming out, it, it certainly reinforces the fact that, that we're not out of the woods yet, even though a vaccine is here and we still need to be ever vigilant. And let's talk about the vaccines too as well. So what does a vaccine do for a, a virus? Well, right, so this particular vaccine, um, that is the ones that are already currently out from Pfizer and Moderna, uh, they are an mRNA vaccine. So really, you can think of it as, uh, a, in a real simple term, the first dose as sort of a teacher vaccine, which goes in and it teaches all the cells uh, what to recognize if COVID-19 ever enters the system and how to attack it so that your body doesn't get sick uh, too desperately or too hospitalized or, or even to die from it. The second dose you can think of sort of as the, uh, the uh, principal maybe, who comes in and makes sure that, uh, that the, the first teacher did their job and brings it up to 95% efficacy. So uh, for example, with Moderna, the first dose is anywhere between 43 and 84% effective. Everybody is different. Um, and the second dose is what brings everybody up to that 94, 95% efficacy. So, um, so the vaccine, while still a small chance that somebody could get COVID-19, it certainly helps reduce hospitalization and death and the severity of illness when somebody was to encounter COVID-19. Um, are there differences between the different vaccines that are out there or are they do this, the same, same job, I guess? The two current vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, are very similar. Okay. Um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that will be on the market soon is a different type of vaccine. And, um, and more to come on that as the FDA approves that and, and its efficacy and, um, and how that would be administered. And there's further vaccine companies, you know, I mean, pharmaceutical companies coming out with further vaccines in the coming months as well, too. Now, is your department involved in the distribution or, or the, of the vaccine as well? So I guess the question is for information if people need to get a vaccine, what should they do? Yeah, in Kenosha County, we have about 12 vaccinators across the county, and we have all of those sites and their appointment links listed on our COVID County Hub website, um, and we are one of them. So yes, we've been having clinics since the week before New Year's, and uh, they have ranged up, depending upon supply, from two days a week to four days a week, and, and we have achieved over 55% of our 65-plus population in Kenosha County. So 
we're doing a lot of great work getting shots in arms and helping to protect the community. So we are, um, as a health department and many other health departments across the state, right alongside healthcare and pharmacies, giving vaccinations. Great. And then I think there's like, we hear 1A, 1B, 1C. So where are we at right now with that? And who's involved or who, who can get the shot at right now? Right. Well, the 1A category was healthcare frontline, you know, healthcare workers. Um, then they added in law enforcement, corrections, and fire departments shortly thereafter. That was uh, 1B essentially is how that was originally listed. Uh, but then they got lumped into 1A. Then the 65 plus population opened up. And that was, that was technically 1C. Um, so as you can see, the whole 1A, 1B, 1C categories have, have all but been um, calling that as it was originally put out has sort of been uh, marred, you know, uh, with the delineations. The, the next category that will open up is a lot of people from 1B, but is not the entire original 1B category. So on Monday, uh, vaccine will be eligible to the education sector, the childcare sector, manufacturing, food processing, um, critical workers such as um, um, utilities, wastewater, and many others uh, will be open up and eligible on Monday, March 1st. So no longer do we necessarily call it 1A, 1B, 1C. It's just really who are the communities that are eligible? What are the occupations that are eligible? All based upon risk. We've been hearing the term herd immunity. Could you explain what that is and, and how does this plan to this uh, vaccination? Yeah, so, and you know, a lot of research is still happening on the what is the exact herd immunity number for COVID-19, but for example, Kenosha County is, is looking at a 75% herd immunity. The state has named an 80% herd immunity. It's typical for most viruses to be somewhere between 70 and 80%. Um, so for Kenosha County, that means that we would want to get two doses in 127,500 people for Kenosha County, whose population is around 170,000. So when we can get vaccine into that many people, it would really slow the spread of COVID-19 uh, to where we could hopefully start to return to some semblance of normalcy uh, without having to have the masks and the, you know, all, all of the rest of the social distancing. So while more research is set to come out in May, uh, worldwide and nationally on that, that is the goal that we're, we're shooting for. And, and right now in Kenosha County, we've administered as a total, not just the health department, but all of our vaccinators um, have administered at least one dose into over 14% of our Kenosha County population. So we're chunking along, getting to that 75%. A call center too for questions that open up. Uh, do you have any information of that? That. Yeah, so when vaccine first became available, and it um, quite honestly, we weren't expecting it until March or April, um, but then it came the week before New Year's, and so we had to ramp up very quickly in order to be able to get doses and arms. That unfortunately created an equity issue that the fastest way we could ramp up was to really have an online registration system, and that means that the people who could sign up for a vaccine were those who obviously have an email or internet access, and it was very easy for those who are a little more tech savvy to get an appointment in that 1A healthcare worker population. When the state opened up to the 65 plus population, it was um, very obvious and apparent that a large portion of the 65 plus population doesn't have emails or internet access. So we realized we needed to quickly ramp up an easier way for them to be able to get appointments. And hence the call center was born. So the whole purpose of that was to reach our most vulnerable populations who had questions, who, who don't know how to sign up online so that they could call and we could guarantee them an appointment um, if they fell into the ed eligible group. Yeah, and so our call center is um, up and running for the last two weeks. We're getting hundreds of calls a day. We're able to get people appointments and, um, and it's very well received. And so right now we're staffed with, I think about 10 or 11 people. We have the capacity to ramp up to 20 people should the volume increase to handle those phone calls. We're at that point now where people do want to get vaccinated or have questions and, and want to get scheduled to do so. Exactly. Well, and these are largely people that have been isolated in their home for the past year with no social contact. And so we're finding a lot of people just, just want that voice, just that person to talk to. And um, so we, we spend all the time that the person on the other end of the line needs. And, you know, if they just want to, you know, have their questions answered or be able to talk to somebody else. We're, we're, we're enforcing a lot of good customer service just to be able to reach our community and, and, and let them know that uh, we're going to keep them safe. 
I know you've had a tough year as far as this guy. Everybody did, but I know your department especially because when this ended, a lot of calls were coming to you. How do you feel now we're coming a year from now or a year from that date? Um, are we kind of on track getting, when they were talking about flattening the curve and, and, and numbers going down, are we at a good point now or should we be doing better? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, the, the safer at home we had last spring definitely did flatten the curve for us. Um, and while that was a very strenuous time for, for public health department, um, you know, we were able to see the effects and the science and the data proved that we were able to flatten the curve. Um, we had a bit of a lull in June for a couple of weeks, and then we had another spike in July. Um, we had another lull uh, of low cases in August, and then of course, September, October, November, December, we, we had a, a massive spike. Um, in cases at that time. So this virus is a little bit different than your typical pandemic that's an influenza pandemic, which usually has a first uh, spike, a three to four month reprieve, and then a second larger spike. We've already had you know, two smaller spikes and one large spike with this coronavirus. So with all of these new variants that are out, we're certainly preparing for, hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst, um, another spike to come within the month. So while we're at a low right now with cases, our death count has come down slightly, but we're still too high, um, averaging one uh, to two deaths every other day or so at this point in Kenosha County. So we are at a low as far as number of cases, but it also is because people aren't getting tested as much as they were in the fall. So without getting tested, it's very hard to track where the virus is moving and see how infectious our county is. So that is a bit of a problem that with people are not getting tested as much as they were before um, so that we can really sort of track and trend if the virus is going to have another spike soon. So then hopefully in a year from now, if we social distancing and mask up and hopefully get 75% vaccinated, we should be in a better place a year from now. Definitely. We should definitely be in a better place. I mean, COVID-19 will never fully go away, but if the virulence can decrease to where um, it can become uh, less deadly, essentially, and, and, and produce less hospitalizations. I mean, it will always be around. The vaccine will forever be around, just like we always have, uh, you know, diphtheria and measles, mumps and rubella shots and all of that. Um, uh, so it, it will always exist in society, but hopefully it, beco it becomes much less of a problem. And so that's what we're trying to achieve there with that. So... Well, doctor, thank you so much for this information. It was very uh, useful. And uh, if anybody would want more information, uh, phone number or website, uh, where, where should they go? Yeah, so our call center is 262 605 6799. And our Kenosha County COVID Hub website, which we have um, a whole data dashboard, all the stats you could ever want, and all the information on who's eligible and, and vaccine appointments. If you click KenoshaCounty.org, um, our main website at the very top is the COVID red button. If you click on the red button, it'll take you to all the COVID information. So that is where we try to direct people to, to find out more information. Of course, where we are in continuous communication with media, with our Kenosha news partners, and, um, and putting out information that way. So, uh, so yeah, we, we hope that people will continue to, to stay vigilant, and um, we're working on equity issues to assure that our most vulnerable populations, including our people of color, when that becomes eligible, that we'll be able to get them in and, and that uh, we're answering people's questions who are vaccine hesitant or, or concerned about all of the myriad of rumors and, and, and the false information that's spread out there, that uh, we can correct that and educate people and get people vaccinated, which will save lives. So, Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer Freyhype uh, from Kenosha County uh, for talking with us today. Thank you so much.